Hey you guys, Manny Gomez here with News by Muse, as always bringing you the latest and greatest in entertainment. Today we are covering the U.S. premiere of Godzilla Minus One in theaters December 1st. We're here to talk to the creators, we're here to talk to the actors and some of the fans of one of the greatest icons in cinema. Let's take a look. What makes Godzilla so timeless that after so many decades, you can come back and still tell a fresh story? Yeah, I think it's because every time there's some sort of worry or stress in the world, that's when Godzilla appears. But then it's different with each era, you know. So I think that's that's why he has such an appeal over decades. What was it like to, to watch the film last week in Japan for the first time and, and did you see the, the you know the fan reaction and, and you yourself as a fan? そうですね。ここまでやっぱりあ、世界中の人、そしてまあもちろん日本の方々もそうですし、ここまで愛されてるゴジラの作品に出れたっていうことがまレッドカーペット歩いたり、イベントをやるにやるに連れてどんどんど
Hey everybody, this is Hannah Fletcher and we are at the premiere of Radical starring Eugenio Derbez. Stay tuned and stick around because we are speaking with the cast and crew. I feel really blessed because constantly you are in projects that probably they, they don't do well or uh, when you see the, the, the projects on screen already finished, it's not what you expected. And I feel blessed that uh, when I saw Radical and I felt how powerful it is, how people walked out of the movie touched by this movie and knowing that it could start a conversation that could change probably education in many parts of the world, I feel really, really blessed. I, we already went to Washington. We talked to uh, the Secretary uh, of Education, to Madame Vice President also, and, and, and in Mexico too, I'm talking with the government. So. Hopefully we can change something related to education. I was originally sent the article the, in Wired Magazine that the story is based on, and I read it and like I, I, I thought for sure I knew what it was, and it's like, oh, it's going to be some sappy, like I'm not going to want to do it. <laughs> and then I cried like two times reading the article, and, 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 and I think why I cried is what uh, intrigued me about the story, that, that no, there's actually... It's not sappy. There, there, there's, of course, there are inspirational parts to it, and there's hopeful parts to it, but there's also this like, this just deep-seated reality about uh, just how we look at kids, how kids look at us, and and the challenges that that they face, and and that in fact it's, you know, these things can be overcome, and so I was I was just really. Uh, drawn to the material. Thank you guys so much for watching. We had such a wonderful time tonight. Now I'm going to send it back over to Manny in the studio. Thanks, Hannah. Radical has inspired participant and Hispanics in philanthropy to create the Radical Fund to raise funds in support of 12 organizations that are working to close the achievement gap for Latino students. You can check out the link on screen to find out how you can help. And Radical, in case you haven't seen it, it's still playing in theaters everywhere. Now to box office news with a big story over the weekend is the number one film in theaters, Marvel Studios, The Marvels. But unfortunately, it's not for a good reason. Domestically, the latest superhero team-up film grossed $47 million, which according to Comscore is the studio's lowest performing film, even below 2008's Incredible Hulk. There isn't one big reason why The Marvels didn't do well. Rather, it seems a collection of them. This may force Disney to reassess what resonates with audiences and brings them into the theater going forward with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As of now, most of their Marvel films have been pushed back to 2025 due to delays, except Deadpool 3. And in second place over the weekend is Universal and Blumhouse's Five Nights at Freddy's with $9 million. The film based on the popular video game franchise has made over $215 million worldwide. All of this despite the fact that it was also released on Peacock on its day of release. In third place, Taylor Swift's The Eras Tour added another $6 million in its fifth weekend. Domestically, it has grossed over $172 million, making more than Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Transformers Rise of the Beast, and soon Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, putting it in 11th place overall in 2023. A new documentary is making its rounds through the film festivals, Shot in the Arm, directed by Scott Hamilton Kennedy and executive producer Neil deGrasse Tyson, focusing on the global measles epidemic and its connection to the anti-vaccine community. During a recent interview, we chatted about people's lack of trust in science and what we can do as a society to fix that. We need to teach science differently in school so that as adults, people will not think of science as just some temporary body of knowledge that you, that no one, that just happens to be true at any moment. And, but then you could discount it if you have some other pathway that you believe gives you access to truth. You know, you do two hours of your own work on Google and now you know, right? Um, this is a, a point I made in my, in my master class where there are people who know enough about a subject to think they're right but not enough about that same subject to know that they're wrong. And so they build platform and they get followings. This is the whole social media currency. What is your following? And uh, if I don't do the two hours of work, but you do, and I follow you, now both of us are thinking the same way. And uh, there was one of the basketball players, I forgot which, it might've been Kyrie Irving, who's yeah. all into flat earth. Yeah. But then he he later confessed he just fell down a rabbit hole on YouTube and YouTube is feeding him the things that they know he kept looking at 
and they were not feeding him other views, more authentic views. And he and he doesn't have a he's a basketball player. We're good with that. OK, plus you can play basketball and still think Earth is flat because the court is flat. <laughs> so, you know, as long as he doesn't become head of NASA, we're still good in the world. Right. But what he what he confessed was the power of these forces operating on him without him having a separate toolkit to sift through who are the charlatans and who are the authentic sources. A shot in the Arm will be playing at Lamel Cinemas in Los Angeles on Friday. We got a couple of trailers released late in the week that we need to talk about. Over the weekend, we got the full trailer for Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. The story centers on a young woman living on the outskirts of a galaxy who must find a group of warriors to save the galaxy from an invasion of a tyrant. The film stars Sophia Butella, Ed Scrang, Cleopatra Coleman, and Carrie Ells. Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire will be released exclusively on Netflix on December 22nd. Then from Disney Pixar, The Little Voices and Riley's Head are back next summer in the animated feature Inside Out 2. And for our resident emotions, things will definitely get out of control as they are introduced to a new emotion, anxiety. The trailer has been so popular that according to Disney, it has over 157 million views in just 24 hours, a record previously held by Frozen 2. Disney Pixar's Inside Out 2 will be released in theaters on June 14th of next year. As you can see, we're really busy here at News by Muse covering TV and movies. So let us get back to it. We're going to go check out this movie. In the meantime, I'm Manny Gomez with News by Muse.